All right, everyone, it's time for Occult Literature, video number 316. Human order and human urine in rights of a religious or semi-religious character. Obviously, I can't fit the whole thing in the actual title on the internet. Uh, link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon. Second and third links are to my books, blogs. This is an academic work, and it's anthropological. It is heavily sourced. Uh, with sources ranging from the U.S. Surgeon General at the time, in the in the end of the 19th century, all the way back to like Torquemada and some of his writings. A lot of the notes are in uh, French or Spanish. I, I very slowly was able to process them, more or less. Um, it's a fascinating work. Essentially, it's it goes beyond just piss and shit and religion. Uh, although that's the main topic. It also talks about the use of like dirt, tears, uh, excrement in general, dead animals, it goes into sacrifice, and it's sort of tied into the phallicism concept, which was like the origin of religions, especially the tr more tribal ones, from basically penis worship, uh, and in some cases, yoni worship, the, the, the female reproductive organ. Uh, the labia specifically is an image, we've all seen, you know, stuff on this. History Channel used to talk about it back when they did history, and it wasn't just the Spooky Woo channel. Uh, it's very interesting, it goes into, a lot of this um, deals with, with Hindu culture. Because, uh, of course, especially within Hindu medicine, Ayurveda, cow urine is used, uh, cow dung and so forth, it's considered cleansing. Um, it, it talks about uh, about certain African cultures. It also delves a lot into certain uh, Mesoamerican groups, especially from Central America, uh, where in some cases blood and urine and so forth were used in a celebratory sense. Uh, it also talks about how uh, human sacrifice was substituted in some cases ritualistically with excrement or with animal offering, animal sacrifice as well. Uh, sacrifice is covered here in the context of carcasses, as a form of like veneration or atonement or whatever. Most of it though does deal with, with urine and feces. Uh, it really is fascinating and also it's, it's less, in, at some points in works of this nature from that period, there's a vehemence that goes on. They're like, well, these other cultures, look at them worshiping dung. We don't do that sort of thing. But actually, this work almost immediately opens up with talk about the Feast of Fools and similar European traditions among the French peasantry, certain groups in Italy and so forth, and actually, uh, you know, sort of the ritualistic use of, of urine, especially uh, in that context, or of animal feces, uh, and in some cases, carrion. Of course, if you look at, and it doesn't talk about the Agori tribe, which is, one thing, unfortunately, that it leaves out, which would be yeah, interesting uh, as part of this study. Now, if you look at that, people are eating, like, decomposing bodies. It, as a form of shubba, basically. As a form of purification to drive the fear of death out of your body. You're, you, like, ritualistically uh, harm yourself, and, and they do, you know, what we would consider generally to be nutty things. Uh, to them, of course, it's purification. To them, it's, it's basically, well, you know... I don't, I'm going to die someday, I might as well go over my fear of it, so I'm going to eat dead bodies. I'm going to smear myself with pestilence and, you know, injure myself, and, you know, who cares, I'm crucifying the flesh. It's funny, because a lot of Westerners will have a problem with that, but if they look at the same concept of asceticism within a Judeo-Christian or Islamic context, ritualistic fasting, uh, among Shiites, you know, they whip themselves sometimes, even sacrifice. It's basically the same concept when you think about it, just for a slightly different reason. Uh, you don't have to fear death because God's happy, versus you don't have to fear death because you just don't care anymore. You've burned away that capability of uh, fearing mortality. I digress a little bit. Uh, but it is an interesting work. It's 80 pages, so it's an intermediate read. If you have any interest in anthropology, this is definitely, I think, the highest recommended work I can give you. Uh, and if you're into the phallicism side of things, like the origin of religion, Sort of the, the especially Christian take on older religions as being depraved in some cases. Um, it's, it fits right in with that. And in fact, it actually uh, alludes to Hargrave Jennings' works. He was the, the potential author of all the phallicism works. It alludes to that, and it talks about it briefly, the lingam, uh, the adoration of Shiva's lingam, his penis, uh, within a ritualistic context. Still very common, ongoing, as an offering uh, today among mainline Hindus. Uh, it's basically the same thing as a church spire, or a minaret, <laughs> or the bulb on top of a synagogue. It's uh, interesting, uh, and, and goes into the same thing. And this is, by the way, uh, just before I end the video, I should point this out. This actually influenced their concept of the origin of religions, because they said, well, there must be a sort of a primordial, uh, like, antediluvian, like, Atlantean culture, a central cultural starting point, because they all basically do the same thing in different divergent forms. So again, link in the description to my edition of this work on Amazon. It is highly recommended. It's very scientific. 
Uh, it gets past some of the more xenophobic commentary, by the way, that some of the works of the era delve into. Uh, the laundry list of people involved with, with noting in the work uh, is vast. Uh, and second and third links, of course, to the book's blogs. Uh, you can find other academic, sometimes anthropological sourced works there as well. That's about all. Peace out.